Hello everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a Photoshop mock-up template. All right, so those of you who have already been a fan of the channel know that just yesterday, I released a new course that shows you exactly how to make five different types of mockups in Photoshop, as well as how to make money by selling them. Now, some of you may still be on the fence, so that's why I'm creating this 100% free tutorial that shows you how to create a very simple mockup. So it'll show you the very skeleton portion of the process. Now, of course, my course goes into much more detail. So if you're interested in this sort of thing after watching this free tutorial, rather, check out the description and there's gonna be a link where it'll show you exactly where you can access that course. It's over three hours of content and it shows you how to create, again, five different types of mockups and it also shows you how to make money selling them. So what we wanna do, I wanna switch over here to Photoshop and we're gonna open up from the project files, which by the way, you can access again in the description here in YouTube and you can download them for free. And we wanna open up photo.jpg. I'm gonna control H just to get rid of the grid there. And this is a very simple scene that I shot. It just shows some business cards that are completely blank along with a paper, uh, a clip remover or whatever. And again, very simple. I'm uh, just, just gonna show you the very bare bones process of creating templates here. So the first thing we wanna do is get the rough shape of a business card using the rectangle tool. So obviously this is a rectangle. So the rectangle tool is what's gonna be the most obvious tool for the job. Now, business cards, they can come in a bunch of different sizes, but the main size is three and a half by two inches. So if we simply just left click, it'll show, it'll give me the option uh, just to specify in terms of pixels. Uh, so we don't really know, we can't really put 3.5 pixels by two, it won't work. So what we wanna do is go to file new and everything's showing up off my other monitor, no big deal. For the width, we wanna specify 3.2 inches and the height two inches. And we want a document type, uh, custom is fine, we'll hit okay. And then we're gonna go to image, image size, and it's gonna give us 252 pixels by 144 pixels. That's what we want. So let's go back over here. I'm gonna left click with the rectangle tool selected. So it was 252 by 144 and we'll hit okay. Now obviously it's too small, so we're gonna scale that up. Control T, hold shift, and we're gonna make it, you see right here where it begins right there and then where it ends over here, at the top of the existing card from the photo. We're gonna make it just roughly the same size. All right, it's not too important, but that's okay right now. So we're gonna take the move tool and apply that. And what we wanna do now before we do any type of distortion to make this sit perfectly on top of the existing card, we want to change the name first. I'll just change the name here to your artwork and then right click it and convert to smart object. It's a very important step. So now it is a smart object. If you don't know what a smart object is, don't worry, you'll figure out in a second. Now what we wanna do is We'll take down the opacity so we can see the card behind it. So right around 38% would be fine. And now we wanna transform this so it fits on top of this business card right here. So I'm gonna to go to hit Control T and then we're gonna rotate it just slightly just to kind of roughly match the card beneath it. Hit place, we can hit Control T again, hit right click and then choose distort. Now we can take these anchor points right here and we can move them. So we'll move it to that corner of the card right here. We'll move this one over here to this corner of the card. We'll take this and move it right here, just beyond, you see, we can see there's like a, this is out of focus, so it's blurred a lot. Just take it slightly outside of that blur and then take this final point up here and we'll situate it right there. Once you've done that, so I can move tool, hit a place and there we go. So now let's take the opacity back up to 100%. And we can see if you use pure white on your color or whatever it was set at, uh, we'll see it doesn't match uh, the background obviously, which is not a big deal. So now what we wanna do is double click on our smart object layer right here. This is gonna bring up 
the smart object document from which you can put your design. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to file open. We're going to open up the business card dash design dot AI. And for the resolution, I'm going to choose 650 and we're going to hit OK. Now, this is a card design that it did for my partner, Vivs. I'm going to hit Control A and then Control C to copy. We'll close this out without saving and then Control V to paste. I'm going to hit Control T and we're going to get this situated as closely as possible to the correct size right there. OK, so now we'll hit apply and then hit Control S to save. We'll go back and there we go. Now this isn't perfect because the lighting doesn't quite match up. So if we hide this your artwork layer, we can see even though these are completely white, because of the lighting settings and, and the camera settings, it's a little bit dark. So we can fix that. The way we'll do that is with that layer selected, we're gonna go to, I sorry, one second, window adjustments, and then we're gonna choose hue and saturation. Now it has a lightness slider, and we wanna make sure though, before we adjust anything, to click this little icon right here, and this will make the adjustments only affect the layer beneath it. So now we could see it's pointing down to it. So now we'll take this down so that it matches the scene a little bit better. Right around negative 17 works pretty well. Okay, so now what we wanna do, we could see if we toggle this on and off the Your Artwork layer, we could see that the original card that we placed it on top does have a blur. It's kind of out of focus from this portion on and slightly up here as well. The camera was focused right around here. So we can emulate that because obviously that detail got lost. We come up here, we could see how sharp of an edge that is. Well, we could fix that with filters. So with this selected, we're gonna go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Now, the Gaussian blur dialog right here shows up and we'll see that it currently applies it on everything, which we will fix in a second. But right now we want to try to match up the blur kind of consistent with where it was before. Uh, right around 8.4 seems to do a pretty good job down here of matching up what it was. So we're gonna hit okay. And now to control where the blur is placed, we're going to edit the mask right here. So we click on this little white uh, rectangle and we're gonna choose black for our foreground color. So make sure it's all the way down here. And then we're gonna take the brush tool and we're gonna use a, a pretty large brush around a thousand or 1100 pixels with the hardness at 0%. And also we're gonna take the opacity down around 31%. And what we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna select, make sure this is selected, the, the mask, and we're going to left click just in this area. You can see it's gonna to start to get rid of the blur in these areas. So we could do it again in the middle because this is where it is focused at the most. And there we go. So we could see right here that the darker value that we were sort of painting in there is now the area where the blur itself is not being affected as much. So if you really want to crank this up to 100% to get rid of any blur, you can do that just like that. So now we can see it's much darker there in the middle. And now we have this natural blur occurring right here. Now, what about the other card behind it? I uh, it doesn't really make sense just to have one card design sitting on the top and then a bunch of blank beneath it. So the way you can do that, we'll take these two layers, right click, we'll duplicate them, and we'll hit OK. We're gonna move them down beneath. We're gonna hit Control G. We'll call this secondary card. And then we will hit Control T. We'll hit OK for that warning. And we'll just slightly skew it based on where the other card was. Sort of like that. We'll take a move tool, hit apply. And then also we'll expand this group and we'll double click over here for the hue and saturation, just make it slightly darker, maybe right around there. And that's it. So now we can just collapse this 
And if we wanna make an adjustment, we'll see it will make the adjustment based on all the duplicates that we created. In this case, we only have one duplicate. So if we double click this, and let's say for example, we change the color of the card just to show you real quickly. Hue and saturation. We'll come over here. We'll hit okay and then control S to save. Voila, we see they both update automatically. And that, my friends, is it. So basically, as you can see, the process in and of itself, when you're dealing with a pretty simple photograph like this, is fairly simple. However, you will run into other situations where maybe you wanna make a mock-up template that's based on a t-shirt and you have to cut the t-shirt out of a background that you don't want. Uh, and you have to make certain adjustments to the photographs itself, uh, you'll see that it does get a little bit more or quite a bit more complex. And that's where the course comes in. Let me just show you, I'll switch back over to the monitor real quickly, some of the projects that I have. And I'm gonna open up the, those projects real quick from the course files here. And I'll just show you real quickly the type of projects that are covered. So M1 will have M4, there we go. This was uh, actually from the same photo shoot um, as this one that I just showed you right here, except I just narrowed in on a card. But obviously there's a lot more work that's involved in cutting everything out here. I'll also show you another project. There's five total projects. Uh, let's see here, we'll go to uh, uh, M3. And this one was uh, is a really fun one as well. And there's quite a bit of work involved in trying to get everything correctly cut out as well as creating uh, these masks correctly and displacements and everything. So that's just something to check out uh, if you're interested in making money and creating these mock-up templates. All right, so check out the course link in the description here in YouTube and you can get the course for dirt cheap. All right, so hopefully you learned a lot and I will talk to you later.